The best map in the game is Banana Bay. Or is it? If it's the best map, you say, why isn't everyone playing it? You're dumb. Stupid, even. I respond. But real talk, why does this fucking idiot on the internet think Banana Bay is the best map? Well, kind of a rude way to put it. Anyways, most people just see Banana Bay as the bot map, because the bots are a big issue. But why? I'm not a bot hoster, but my guess is that the bots just queue all the maps, so the maps that have less of an actual player base end up with a number of servers that are just filled with bots. But whatever, right? I can whine and piss and shit and cry about bots for as long as I want, but at the end of the day- WRONG! The only thing stopping Banana Bay from being perfect are the bots! Honestly, I'm being a bit dramatic about the bots. It's not really that bad. I'm gonna be real, that previous statement about them being the only problem is also definitely false. More than likely, the problem is the player count. But just for a moment, let's think of what could have been. I'm gonna take an in-depth look at each part of the map and how it plays from my experience. We won't go too into detail, but I'd like to demonstrate at least how the map feels to play. Alright, so first we'll look at the core objective of the map. It's a payload race map, so both teams are pushing a payload towards the objective. But Banana Bay sets itself apart from other maps in the way the round ends. For either team to end the round, they must push the payload onto train tracks and hold that position until the train comes, hitting the bomb and ending the round. This is both similar and different to High Tower, which requires you to hold the point for an extended period of time, however does not depend on an independent factor like the train hitting the payload to end the round. I'm honestly not certain how the community feels about this design, because there hasn't been much discussion around this map since it was teased leading up to Jungle Inferno. I think it's alright though. You know what? We'll start a discussion here. Play a few rounds of Banana Bay after this video, and come back and leave your opinion on that mechanic in the comments. Okay, so next we'll look at the map itself. We're gonna split it in half right at the train track because that's where it mirrors. Actually, it's a reverse mirror because of the way I split it, but it will make sense as we go. First, we have the spawn. You start with three spawn doors. One faces the train track to the right, and the other two face the ocean to the left. We're gonna go out to the left because I set up. So when you go out the higher door on the right, you have two drop downs going either direction. One facing the tracks that serves as a spot for snipers, the other facing the ocean, and it's just a drop down. When you go out the lower door on the left, you meet a ramp that takes you down into the next area, which contains the payload card. This area is somewhat open, so be careful because you're vulnerable to snipers. This is good for snipers who can go up onto this bridge and take a pretty good position on the enemy team as they make their first few pushes onto the cart. On the way up to this bridge, in the passage to the next area, there's a med kit and some ammo. An alternate route to the next area is through this underwater tunnel, which the enemy team pushes the payload through. We're gonna go through the higher passage because it leads more immediately to more paths, and they lead to similar spots anyways. So if we go through this wood chicane thing, we end up at a branching of many paths. The first, leftmost path leads to the enemy's right spawn area, the one we ignored before. The middlemost path leads to the same area, but higher up. Whoa, holy moly. This path is pretty good for a spy, and allows for some good drop or stair step potential up near spawn. The final path, right to the previous, branches off into two. One is an alternate route to the enemy's right spawn, the other leads to the middle of the map where the payload carts pass each other. And that's it. Jesus, that was boring. The map is then just duplicated, turned 180 degrees, and moved over. From here, let's go into a more broad generalization of how the map plays, just to cover all the bases. As you can see, the map is very vertical, and not very large. As far as horizontal sprawl, it's actually pretty small, and this is accentuated by the massive pathway in the middle of the map that is the train track. This makes the map very traversable by scouts, making it very easy to reposition quickly and take fights that a scout might normally run away from. This verticality also adds an entire dimension to the map's playstyle that can be interesting to play around. At the lower levels, you have to watch out for spies, projectiles, or flawed pyros. Higher up, you should make sure not to be sniped or ambushed by a flanking scout. I find this playstyle diversity, especially in the middle of the map, really fun and interesting to fight in. You may have noticed that I didn't go in depth about the objective itself. Why? Cause it's boring, loser. Who the fuck asks about the point? Jesus, you should just click off already. Go s Anyways, to be real, the point's actually pretty fun. The reason I didn't go into it is because of how well it integrates into the gameplay itself. This is one of my favorite features about the map. In other payload or payload race maps, the card feels almost entirely separate from the rest of the gameplay. For example, on High Tower, Banana Bay's more popular cousin, people literally vote kick you for finishing the objective. This is an example of bad map to objective connection. People play the game mode like Team Deathmatch. 
Not that there's anything wrong with a bit of TDM, that just wasn't the map's intended purpose. On Banana Bay, however, it's easy to forget you're even pushing the cart in the first place. I will admit, getting it started is definitely the hard part, but once it's in mid, the whole team remembers the game mode they're playing and actually tries to win. It's a lot of fun, and somewhat comparable to the best maps like Upward or Badwater. So why didn't this map get the attention I think it deserves? Well, from looking at Steam forums or Reddit posts, it looks like a number of problems. The first issue is that people simply prefer Hightower. Let's face it, Hightower is a beloved map, and people will pretty much always think of Hightower when they think of Payload Race. This ties into the next issue. People think of Payload Race as uncoordinated and overly casual. This is mostly the fault of Hightower, which is basically Team Deathmatch. However, this issue seems a bit odd, especially considering the nature of TF2 and how casual it is anyways. So what do we take away from this? Nothing, honestly. It's not even my favorite map. I just want to make a cool little video. I, I had you going though, huh? Anyways, give this map a try. I do think it's pretty good, but uh, I understand if you stick to Upward or Badwater. Well, that's pretty much it. And since I still don't know how to end...